Welcome to episode 11 of YFTV. This week, our leader is Laura. She's going to take us through the Bible reading and the message, and then we'll join Gemma for Task of the Week. Looking forward to seeing how creative you got with shadow puppets. Now, Laura's going to jump straight into the reading, so go and get your Bibles ready, and you're going to need to turn to Hebrews, and it's Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. So pause this video whilst you get that ready, and then we'll join Laura after this. Today's reading is from the book of Hebrews in the New Testament. It's chapter 12, and it's verses 1 to 3. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily hinders our progress, and let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, on whom our faith depends from start to finish. He was willing to die a shameful death on the cross because of the joy he knew would be his afterward. Now he is seated in the place of highest honour beside God's throne in heaven. Think about all he endured when sinful people did such terrible things to him so that you don't become weary and give up. There's so much motivation and encouragement in these verses that no matter what stage you're at in your walk with God or what stage you're at in life or what you're going through, these verses are so relevant and so important because we can never have enough encouragement. Now, I wonder if you have ever heard anybody say, I just don't feel that close to God just now. I have heard it and I have said it. And there are so many reasons in life why we can feel like we are far from God and that we're not running this race the way that we should. We've maybe gotten out of the habit of doing our quiet time or maybe are doing our quiet time, but it is just out of habit to tick that box or because your parents want you to do it. You maybe feel ashamed, like you've messed up and you're burying your head in the sand a bit. You might feel let down by other Christians and just weary of it all. You might even feel let down by God because of things that have happened in your life. Well, whatever the reason is for feeling like you're far from God, it is so important to understand that that is just a feeling and it's not the truth. We find the truth written in God's word where he says twice, he says in Deuteronomy and he says again in Hebrews in chapter 13, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So although we might feel like we're far from God, it is not the truth, it's just a feeling. And these verses that we've read today help us to overcome, they give us motivation, they give us encouragement to help us overcome those feelings and to focus our hearts and minds on the right things, the things that will help us to keep going in our faith. The writer of these verses paints a picture and that picture is that going through life as a Christian is like the race and we the Christians we are the runners and the prize at the end of the race is the best possible prize imaginable. It's eternal life in glory with God, a place so full of joy and praise where it's written in the Bible that he will wipe away every tear from our eyes. A place so wonderful that the Bible also tells us that no mind has conceived, which just means we can't even imagine the things that God has in store for those who love him. That's how amazing heaven is. And that's one of the things that the writer here wants us to have as our focus. To keep us going he wants our minds to be focused on that end goal on that prize because he knows that when we're focused on that when we reflect on that we become so full of hope and so full of joy and full of gratitude as well for the very fact that all we have to do 
we don't have to, we, we can't earn this. There's nothing we can do to earn this prize. All we have to do is believe that Jesus is who he says he is and to ask for and receive his forgiveness. And that's just amazing. So that's our first encouragement to be focused on the end goal, to be focused on the prize. Another way that the writer encourages us to keep going in our faith is in verse two. He tells us to keep our eyes on Jesus. And he tells us to do this for a couple of reasons. Jesus is the perfect example of being so focused on the end goal. Jesus was so focused on saving each one of us from our sins. He was so focused on the joy and the glory that would come after his death that he was able to endure so much. The injustice, the torment, the agony, and then these verses talk about the shame of the cross as well. Jesus endured all of that because of his deep love for us and because he was so focused on the end goal of being seated at the right hand of God and of saving each one of us. And the writer here wants us to be inspired by Jesus, to see how he did it, to copy his example and to be inspired by him. So that's the second encouragement and motivation he gives us. Now a third reason, a third example of an encouragement we can find from these verses is another reason to fix our eyes on Jesus, which is that we're not even asked to run this race by ourselves. And that is amazing when you come to think of it. Not only are we, do we, not only do we have the promise of our eternity, not only do we have the example of Jesus, of his whole life, of all his teachings, of his love, not only do we have his perfect example, but thirdly, we have the knowledge and truth that he walks, he, he does this race with us every step of the way, no matter what we go through, that he is our strength, that he is our comforter, he's our peace, he's our guide, our provider, our deliverer. And as we've said before, he will never leave us and never forsake us. So whatever stage you're at on your walk with God, be encouraged to lift your eyes to him, to keep going, to keep reading and learning, to keep praying and listening, to keep growing in faith, to keep taking the next steps, whatever that means for you, because you know that he goes before you, you know that he walks beside you, and you know what joy and splendour is at the end of all of this. Now it goes without saying that life is not easy. And at this particular time, it's so much harder for so many. And I pray that you feel encouraged that the creator of heaven and earth is by your side. That your heavenly father's love for you is greater than any love you have experienced in your life. That you'll experience his presence and his strength and comfort and that you'll allow him to carry you when you just don't feel like you're able to take those next steps just now. And for anybody who hasn't made the decision yet to follow Jesus, I just pray that the truth of his love will be revealed to you and that you will feel ready to take your first steps on your journey with him. So let's just close in prayer and give God thanks. Heavenly Father, we bring you our praise this morning. We praise you for the loving God that you are and for your son, Jesus. We thank you for the promise of heaven and the hope that that brings us. We thank you for the love and life and example of Jesus. And we thank you that you are with us at all times and will never leave us. We pray for our wonderful young people, Lord. We pray that they will know that you're with them and that they'll keep their eyes on you. We pray especially for those who need your comfort and protection today. We pray you will draw so close to them. And Heavenly Father, we pray for all that is going on in our world. 
We bring before you all those who are oppressed and suffering. And Heavenly Father, we pray for peace and justice. In Jesus' name, Amen. Good morning and welcome back to Task of the Week segment. This week's task was to send in your photo or video of your best shadow puppet. So let's have a look and see how you got on. Some brilliant entries there. This is our updated leaderboard at the moment. There's still time to catch William up at the top. So this week we are going to be making water features. That's right, we want to see a video or a photo of the best water feature. It doesn't have to be outside, as long as it is some sort of feature that contains water, that's all we need to see. Remember, Thursday's your deadline. Good luck. Well, that's all we have time for this week on YFTV. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for those who got involved in sending in your shadow puppets. Please keep getting involved with the task of the week. It's just great to see what you're up to. Thank you for Laura for all those challenging thoughts on quiet time, on obedience, on running the race. Some really good stuff in there and I hope you can all take it to heart this week. And one last thing, we've had a prayer request from Samaya Nasuna all the way from Uganda and they have asked us to pray for their future to be bright and it's such a hopeful, honest prayer. I think it's something that we could all do with a little help on. So let's bow our heads and we'll have a bit of prayer time. Dear God, thank you for your plan. Thank you for always being with us and for loving us. Just pray that these young people have bright futures, that you'll utilize them in the best way possible, that they can be the best instruments for you, whatever you call them to God. I just pray that you can use them and their futures can be bright. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, next week there'll be no YFTV. That's because it's the prize giving service in our church, which we would always spend in church. So tune in at 11 o'clock via uh, the church webpage or by YouTube, whichever one you prefer, and let's see what the youngest members of our church have been up to. Okay, bye for now. <laughs>